Before we jump into the conversation about a broken man using a woman and the signs he gives off before this happens, I think it's rather important to identify why most relationships these days, and um, I was about to say the word fail, but I'd rather just say that they end, okay? That they don't work out. And I think, and, and let's just differentiate relationship. Let's talk about those people who have invested at least three months together, okay? They've spent uh, at least 100 hours of face-to-face -face time together doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, that sort of thing. Let's just establish that that's the minimum criteria for what we call a relationship. And let's also consider the minimum criteria are two people that actually call themselves boyfriend and girlfriend or call themselves in a relationship. They've identified the relationship. So why do they end? Uh, well, let's differentiate also the difference between people in their 20s and 30s versus those people that are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and even 70s, okay? Because I think it's really, there's a big difference between those that are in the baby-making years of their life versus those of us that are mostly in midlife, which is after baby-making years and before retirement. And within our demographic, there's a significant percentage of divorced people. Okay, so... Coming back to why do they not work out? Why do they end? Well, I think one of the primary reasons is that two people are incompatible with one another. They're just not compatible for one another for a variety of different reasons. Maybe they don't share the same values. Maybe their lifestyles aren't blendable with one another. That could be one of the significant causes for why so many people that enter into relationships don't work out in the long run. Now, another significant reason is um, emotionally wounded people oftentimes attract emotionally wounded people. And during this emotion, these two emotionally wounded people, they do not have the skills to actually navigate their mo individual emotions for one another and they bump heads with one another, emotionally speaking. Now, let's give you an example of this. Um, well, Let's talk about avoidant, avoidant love attachment style and anxious love attachment style, okay? If you're not familiar with the book, Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller, I highly recommend checking out. By the way, there's a link below in the description of this video for all the books I recommend under Jonathan Recommend Books. Okay, why am I talking about the book Attached? If you are an anxious person, which means you tend to be a little bit more needy. You tend to need more validation and some level of security within the relationship. You'll have a propensity to overgive in the relationship or give more than what you may be receiving. Just as a simple example. Now, avoidant love attachment style, they're fearful of love. They're, they, need that, they need a sense of freedom. They don't want to feel smothered by a person. Think about it. The needy person oftentimes smothers the person that doesn't, that feels rather overwhelmed by someone who's giving too much to them. These are emotionally wounded people. I don't mean that they're bad people. I just mean that they have childhood wounds and traumas that have gone unhealed and they bump heads in this woundedness. Now, the primary, the part of within this dynamic is a fear to get close to another human being. That's another reason why a significant percentage of relationships end is because there's a fear to actually completely, for lack of better words, surrendering to another human being, okay? So why it's important to understand this most human beings are good people. Most men are good people. We're going to talk about broken men in a moment, but most men are good people. Yes, there are plenty of manipulators out there. There are plenty of narcissists out there. There are even sociopaths out there. There are even scammers out there. I get that. But believe it or not, that probably represents less than 20% of the population. For the vast majority of people, are good, decent human beings, and yet they're emotionally wounded. Some of them are emotionally constipated. Some of them emotionally inept. Whatever terminology you wanna use, some people call it emotionally unavailable. The reality is, is these are good people that do not have the skills to actually navigate a significant relationship. And why do I know about this? 
Because after I went through a divorce, I was a broken man. Let me give you some examples of being broken. First off, when going through a divorce is the unraveling of the tapestry of an old life. I had a life, I had children, we did things together. We did family outings together. We went to parties together. We went to business functions, you know, as a, a, a couple. We had friends we socialized with. And when we separated, that all began to unravel. So there was a completely shift in the dynamic of my life, the way it was, and literally overnight, it changed. And in that overnight, I began online dating, okay? Because there was this whole missing side of me. I wanted to fill it. I wanted to, I, you know, immediately lost this one person in my life, and I need to fill that hole because I was in this anxious attachment phase of needing something to fill this hole within myself, to give you an example. In addition, I'd lost my significant corporate job high paying corporate job, and I found myself financially in fear. So I'm going through this emotional shift in my life through this divorce, and I was in fear of my survival. And what was interesting for myself was my, my drug of choice was actually internet dating. It was called internet dating back then. It wasn't even called online dating yet. It's called internet dating. Now it's called swipe dating. And in that experience, I was so broken that I felt like all I needed was someone to rescue me and I would feel better about myself. And so what happened is I went on date after date after date. And in the course of a year, I had over a hundred meet and greets. And what I realized during those hundred meet and greets that the common denominator, the problem was me. So I began doing a deep dive into recognizing what patterns in my life was I experiencing. What was causing me to be an anxious attachment style? And I started to go to places like the Hoffman Process and Insight Institute, just to name a few. I was even in a relationship with a therapist. Thankfully, she, she knew I was a broken man, and yet she loved and accepted me for who I was. And while it didn't work out, all of these experiences were preparing me for where I am at today, sharing all this with you. But I'm here merely to point out that whether you're a man or a woman, we are swimming in a sea of dysfunctionality, at least here in the United States, in the dating marketplace, particularly for those of us that are in midlife. And we're all searching for that prince or princess charming, that one person who is completely healed, has their act together, and they're drop-dead gorgeous. Everybody is searching for the unicorn. Quite frankly, the unicorn doesn't exist because even that person who might be have their act together, might be attractive, they still have wounds that need to be healed. What's interesting is we actually do our greatest healing when we're in relationship, when we're butting up against our wounds and our fears, and that's an opportunity to work and grow for ourselves. And yet many of us give up right before that point of time where it actually creates a stronger bond with one another. So I've just talked about emotionally broken men because I was an emotionally broken man. I'm still riddled with wounds that I'm constantly looking at and healing on a regular basis. This is a journey for all of us to do and we, are, we have been invited to opt to give ourselves love. And this is why I wrote my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help and Spiritual Work, by the way, link below as I recommended. Why I wrote this book is because I recognize that the most important ingredient, whether you meet someone in your life or not, is to learn to really feed your own soul, to navigate your own emotions, and to find that place of inner peace, even in the chaos of dating, mating, or relating. And yes, it is a clusterfuck out there if, any, if, any, if anyone agrees or disagrees with me or not. So the emotionally broken man, I'm bringing this up because I wanna at least give you some signs to avoid these men so you don't find yourself investing too much in a relationship. You're not expect, if, remember I said earlier, it takes about three months to develop a relationship. I wanna help you avoid those three years and even longer periods of time in relationship by paying attention to these signs. Actually, right before, one thing I wanna to say to you Coming back to the emotionally broken man, there was a quote I recently heard uh, from someone on, 
on uh, YouTube, and that is women are not rehabilitation centers for broken men. I'm going to take that. Women are not rehabilitation centers for broken men. In fact, why I created my private coaching program, by the way, there's a link right here and a link below in the description, is to help you recognize the emotionally mature man, the man who's genuinely compatible with you versus those broken men. My job is to help you identify these and vet these men much sooner so you don't find yourself in these long pro pro uh, procrastinated type of relationships. All right, so what are some of the signs that a broken man will, will end up using a woman? The first and most obvious one is your time together is mostly about sex. Well, sex is an important integral part of the mating process. There's no doubt about that. If it's only about sex and there isn't some deeper level of, of getting to know you, then there's a good sign that he's using you, whether he's a broken man or not. We men are oftentimes driven by sex, but it's important that if you want a relationship beyond sex, then it's important to work on the things I'm about to share with you today. Number two, he doesn't open up to you. He avoids personal questions. He even avoids talking on the phone. I see this so habitually with so many of you that have engaged in text relationships. I call these cyber relationships where most of your communication is via text messaging and most of your communication goes something like this. How's your day going? Did you have a good day? I hope you had a good day. This is a joke from sign or a line from the uh, Seinfeld where Kramer goes on talking about what marriage is all about is talking about your day. The reality is, is a deeper relationship requires talking more than the surface level things that happen. And if he avoids opening up to you with personal questions, there's a good sign, good chance he could be a broken person or he might be using you if he's not willing to go deeper than the surface. Number three, he doesn't ask about you. Think about this. In the, in the early stage of dating, we men are so peculiarly successful at dissecting your life right before we have sex with you. But the minute we have sex with you, why is it we abandon you? Well, because maybe we are driven by sex. But somebody who's using you, again, like we talked about, he only gets together for you sex. Someone who's using you doesn't, will not, most will most likely not ask you more about you after you've been physically intimate. I know one of the things I appreciated most after um, our first time that my, my sweetheart and I were intimate with each other is I wanted to know more about her. The physical intimacy led to a desire to have more because while the physical intimacy was good, I knew I wanted to get to know the totality of this person. And if he avoids asking you, or he doesn't ask about you, he doesn't check in with you, he doesn't want to see how your day is, that's a good sign that he's using you. Number four, you know, he doesn't protect you. Now, what I mean by protect you is men are known as provider protectors. And we think of providing in the financial sense and we think of protecting in the physical sense. But you know what isn't happening these days, especially by broken men, emotionally broken men, is they're not protecting you emotionally speaking. Remember earlier when I said women are not rehabilitation centers for, you know, for broken men, what, a bro what, a, what an emotionally mature man does is he recognizes that his actions has consequences. And if his actions has consequences, he will be protecting you from an emotional sense along with the physical sense. But a broken man is incapable of actually recognizing that his actions has consequences, his selfish accent, uh, selfish um, needs of occasional companionship, occasional connection, occasional sex. See, his need for that trumps understanding that you might get attached to this person and you might bond with this person. And he's not being a true protector in that sense because he's an emotionally broken man. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? If it is, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please hit that notification bell so you can get notified of videos.
I'm hoping this is making, this is really resonating with you to understand that broken people, while they might be good human beings or they might be terrible human beings, they're com oftentimes unaware that they're so broken that they do these things without malice. It just happens to be these are the things that happen. Now, another sign that he's going to be using you that an emotionally broken man sometimes, well, this can go either way. He rarely makes time to introduce you to his friends or he rarely makes time to want to meet your friends. Now, honestly, though, this can go either way because a broken man could do all these things. Keep in mind, a broken man could also be a very needy man who might need you to fulfill what's wrong, what's hurting inside of him. But given that most men are avoidant type of love attachment styles and they tend to be more emotionally constipated, that is the exception, but that isn't, again, it's not the absolute rule, but the men who are emotionally broken and avoidant personalities oftentimes don't wanna meet the people in your life. That's a good sign that you're gonna be used. By the way, another sign is he doesn't go out of his way to help you. Maybe you're sick. Maybe you need a ride to the airport. He doesn't act in true partnership. Again, he wants the benefit of that companionship, that connection, that sex. And sometimes for many of you, that sex is just simply cyber sex because many of you have indoctrinated yourselves into these cyber relationships. But a true emotionally mature man who wants a day in day out relationship will be there for you when you need them. That's the true sign of a partner. That's a true sign of a friend. And lastly, a good sign that he's going to be he's a broken man. He'll be using you is he puts off conversations about exclusivity and he puts off conversations about some permanence in your relationship. That's a sign. If he's avoiding exclusivity, if he's avoiding the future, that's a possible strong sign. He's a broken person and broken can come in a variety of different ways, shapes or forms, but he's incapable of leaning into a deeper desire for commitment. And I think it's important to recognize that we have two classes of people out there dating. There's the people that are dating with a short-term mating strategy, and then there's the people that are dating with a long-term mating strategy. A long-term mating strategy are those people that are seeking to either live together or get married with someone. They actually want some level of permanence, some level of roots that come in the form of those two types of dynamics. For the most part, this isn't an absolute. But a short-term mating strategy is those people are just live in the moment. Let's just have a good time. It's all about having a good time. Let's not put labels on it. Let's take it slow. I don't want to put any pressure towards commitment because I have no fucking clue what I want. And I have no, des I have no design it's in my head of something long-term. I'm just in it for the short-term. And maybe, maybe if I like you enough, I might shift from a short-term mating strategy to a long-term straighting mating strategy. But that's a very weak foundation for those particularly men that do this they have this delusion that's but the delusion is there is no unicorn out there to switch from a short-term mating strategy to a long-term mating strategy and many of you think you're the unicorn that will convert this guy that's got a long short-term mating strategy into a long-term mating strategy and no wonder it's fucking chaos out there is this making sense is this resonating please let me know so coming back to the emotionally broken man, it happens for a variety of reasons and most of them mostly outside of their control. You know, most humans don't do the necessary personal development, self-help, spiritual work and therapy to heal from their childhood wounds and traumas. Maybe you are one of those people that hasn't really done a deep dive and I invite you to read the book the Hoffman process, the Hoffman process. I'm going to read this. The world famous technique that empowers you to forgive your past, heal your present and transform your future. The Hoffman process. I did this at their retreat center, but you can begin with the book because when you understand yourself, maybe you can understand the dynamic of who you might want to date in the future and be better prepared to do the vetting process to determine if you two are even a fit for one another on an emotional level, let alone shared values, blendable lifestyles, and then that all important 
chemistry piece or that attraction piece that we're all hyper focused on and rarely ever paying attention to those other things in the di dating dynamic. Is this sinking in? I'd like to hear from you. All right, I think this will be a good place to start with our Q&A.